Thank, thank you very much, Fru, for this really kind introduction. And it's, it's really a pleasure to be here today. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy to, to be able to present to you as well, one of the first members of the, of the CSP, of the permanent CSP team. And um, what I will do today is share an update on the, on the progress of the CSP and where we are at the moment. But before I dive into it, I just wanted to say that I really wish we could all be in ANSI together today, um, rather than most of us joining probably like me from our computer screens across the world. And I really hope that next year we will be able to come together in person, um, like Philippe mentioned before as well. I think many of us are longing to have these face-to-face -face meetings again and actually work together in person. So I will go then straight into the update on the CSP. And first I wanted to recap of how the, the CSP came to be. So the idea of the CSP was based on the request from cholera affected countries um, to um, have additional technical support from the GTFCC in the development and implementation of their national cholera control plans. And uh, in 2019, the GTFCC endorsed this, this idea or this concept, concept to establish a country support platform as an operational arm of the GTFCC and provide this support. And last year, as, uh, as Philippe has already uh, mentioned and you as well, through, um, the GTFCC officially announced that the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies was selected to host and manage the CSP uh, in close consultation with the GTFCC. I would like to also take this opportunity to thank um, our primary donors uh, who, um, who are, have been essential to establish the CSB and who will continue to do so over the next three years initially, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation by, a grant, by this grant that was awarded to the IFRC. And um, I would also like to mention other donors, such as the um, Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation, who are entering into similar grant agreements with the IAFRC to support the CSP. And we're also working on agreements with the Wellcome Trust um, to be awarded to the British Red Cross, which is under negotiation, and that would specifically support the cholera research led by the GTFCC. And this, you have seen this, this chart many times before, and also Danielle has just shown it. And basically, um, the, the part that is more orange in this graph is, uh, is, the, uh, is the part of the GTFCC um, that we all know very well and have worked with a lot in the past. And then the addition that has joined in October is um, the CSP. And the idea, as I mentioned, is to function as an operational arm of the GTFCC and hosted by the IFRC. And the mission of the CSP um, is very much what the name says, it's country support. And for this reason, the majority of the CSP staff um, eventually will be located in countries. We will start small, but there is a plan of um, expanding progressively. One of the questions that we have heard a couple of times was in regards to how countries were going to be selected to, to, to join the CSB and to host an in-country person to, um, to, as the program manager for, for the CSB. And the approach that we are taking is a phased approach um, uh, to stepwise roll out the support, which will allow us to adjust our way of working and the operational model and very much learn from the experience that we have as we move along. And the countries, of course, um, uh, to, uh, to, to initially host um, these program managers were chosen amongst the 47 cholera affected countries that have been identified in the global roadmap. And we've tried to follow the recommendations that have, have come out from our meeting last year in October in one of the breakout sessions on how to select the countries initially. And um, there, there were four criteria that we primarily used. Um, the first one to serve as a proxy for the burden of cholera. And that was based on, report, um, on reports of cholera cases to WHO in the past three years. That doesn't mean that other countries aren't at risk of cholera, of course, or have been affected in the past. Well, but we try to focus initially on cases on, on countries that have had cases reported in the past three years. The second criteria um, that was used was used as a proxy um, for country commitment to the roadmap and the goals of the roadmap, which was also identified last year in one of those uh, breakout groups or working groups as a very important criteria to, um, to, to, uh, to obtain additional support. 
Um, and as a proxy for this, um, we looked at whether the country already had developed a national cholera control plan or engaged in the process of developing one, um, or if hotspot mapping had been done or an engagement in this process had already occurred. So this helped to narrow down the countries to those that had already um, shown a commitment to the roadmap. This still um, led to a lot of countries being included, of course, because many countries have already engaged. So to further narrow that down, um, we looked at a proxy for um, experience with practical implement implementation of control activities. And of course, there are many activities to choose from, but the one of the ones that we chose was whether um, the country had experience with implement implementing OCV campaign in the past. In that case, we were left with six initial countries that fulfilled those criteria, and um, uh, we tried to reduce it down to four. And the other criteria that we then took into account was the actual context, um, the country context, and um, initially decided to include countries with a more challenging context that may hamper programmatic implementation of the roadmap goals, such as um, conflict um, in, in the country. So um, this, this next map that you can see is, um, in addition to using those criteria, we also wanted to ensure that there was um, an appropriate geographical kind of coverage. And um, we've, we've separated or we've, we've, we've bundled countries together into 11 hubs um, based on their geographic location and size, trying to make sure that they were not too large to dilute the support. And these hubs may be adjusted depending on the needs that we all identify together over the coming years. And um, from, from that information, basically, um, we, uh, we decided to initially select four countries, Bangladesh, um, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Nigeria and Zambia to um, host a um, CSP country manager. This CSP country manager will be based in the country and to work very closely together with a national counterpart that has been nominated by the national authorities to coordinate the support um, to that country where they are hosted, but to also work with other countries in that hub as required and if requests are received. So I think that's a really important point to mention that the CSP support is not just to the countries hosting a CSP country manager, but the idea is that it's also to the surrounding countries in the same hub. And progressively over the next year, we're hoping to expand the country support through establishing additional hubs with uh, in-country CSP um, support offices. Um, as well as, as, as required to um, provide short, medium or long-term deployments in countries according to the needs that are identified by the countries and to provide remote support as well if needed. Um, I would also like to give you a little bit of an overview of the structure um, and where we are with recruitment um, of our CSP team members. So, of course, um, as, as mentioned before, as the operational arm of the GTFCC, um, the, the CSP coordination team will be working very closely together with the GTFCC team in Geneva. Within that coordination team of the CSP that is hosted at IFRC, there will be four main members in that team. Um, our NCP coordinator, Thomas Mollet, who Fru has introduced um, just before. And within Thomas' team, there will be three members. One um, who will primarily focus on NCP coordination, and that will be my role. Um, and then somebody to um, provide a country technical support coordination to identify and mobilize expertise for countries as required. And that is Anne-Sophie Borch, who has also been introduced by, uh, by Fru. And then a third person in this, in this um, coordination team in Geneva is a, an advocacy and resource mobilization officer um, who, will, uh, who will very much focus on exactly that resource mobilization and advocacy to support the implementation of NCPs, which I think was a question as well that has come up before, if there would be support towards the financing um, of, of NCPs, and there is a role that is specifically looking at that. This position had to be re-advertised, um, uh, unfortunately, and um, we are hoping that that person can join us very soon. 
Now coming to the to the most important part, of course, and that is the, the teams within the countries. So you can see that um, there will be the CSP field teams um, that are hosted by the IFRC and who will be working very closely together with the country teams. And we're very pleased that um, in, in, the, in most of the countries, a national counterpart has already been nominated. And also um, what's very good news is that a candidate has been identified as a CSP program man manager for Zambia. And, um, and we are hoping that a person can, uh, that person can join us soon. So after giving you a little bit of the background and the structure, I also wanted to, um, to, to let we know where we are now. So for the IFRC, the work on the CSP has started almost one and a half years ago when the inception team came together to develop the grant proposal to host the CSP. And the inception phase officially started when IFRC was awarded the role to house the CSP in October last year. And the inception phase, phase was initially planned uh, to take around six months and had to be extended by a few months to allow for the development of agreements and proposals and the recruitment of the CSP team, which took a little bit longer than expected. Um, uh, one of the nice things is that in this inception phase, the CSP was already able to support two deployments, um, one to Zanzibar to support an OCV campaign, and the second one to Mozambique to work together with the national authorities on uh, NCP de development. And uh, Jose Paolo Langa will also talk on that in a little while. Currently, we're in the handover phase from the inception team to the CSP team. And we're very grateful that the inception team will continue to provide us support um, as part of the IFRC commitment to the Colorado Roadmap goals. So um, they will not um, they will not leave, leave us all on our own. Um, and um, the CSP team will then continue moving forward the work they have already started from the handover in the next months to oper operationalize the work of the CSP. So the, all of the, or a lot of the foundations have been laid and we are now, we have started the actual work to oper operationalize the objectives of what the CSP is hoping to do. So in addition to the continued engagement with the GTFCC technical working groups that has already been occurring, we will um, be guided by working towards three main outcomes in the CSP. And um, a lot of our work is structured around that. And you may already see that there is a familiarity with the three roles that we will have in the Geneva team that focus each on, on these outcomes. And these outcomes are also uh, aligned with the GTFCC global roadmap. Um, and our main aim with these outcomes is to extend the support at country level. The three CSP members um, in Geneva will each focus on these outcomes guided by our coordinator and the outcome one um, to, for countries to develop and in, implement NCPs through a multi-sectoral coordination me mechanism. The focus of the NCP coordinator will be to support countries from the inception to through the development stage to the submission of an NCP to the IRP to the implementation. So I think this also links in nicely with the previous presentation. And one of the things that uh, we would like to do as requested by countries and as per the needs identified by countries to support the process um, of developing an NCP for submission to the IRP. And that can be at different stages in the development. And we are very much looking forward to working together on that. Um, we believe that there's an added value to have this position at the global level in Geneva, and that would be to share and exchange country experiences by keeping a global overview of the NCPs that are under development and or being implemented and to benefit from the lessons learned from different countries. The second outcome for countries to mobilize resources towards the funding needs identified in their NCPs, um, the focus of the resource mobilization and advocacy a team member will be um, uh, will be to provide expertise on building investment cases and support mobilizing resources, and to also be aware of the global landscape landscape to bring together partners, donors, and countries to be able to have the means to implement the NCPs. The third outcome to provide multi-sectoral support and capacity building to countries will be supported by having uh, someone to coordinate the technical support at the global level, 
Um, and this will also um, ensure that the experiences can be shared by having an awareness of who has worked in which country and to be able to identify the right experts for the support that has been requested. Um, so going to how will the cholera affected countries um, actually benefit from the CSP? Um, uh, the CSP will aim to uh, support countries to work very closely with countries, partners and donors to develop and implement multi-sectoral national cholera control plans, coordinated by a national cholera platform or mechanism, um, which will be part of the inception phase of establishing one if it does not already exist in the NCP development, to support the resource mobilization and advocacy for NCP um, funding and implementation, to facilitate the coordination of technical assistance from the GTFCC members and other stakeholders, provide support for the monitoring and evaluation of NCPs, as well um, as implementation of pri priority operational research, and also to support the revision of NCPs, as NCPs um, are a living document that will evolve over time. And of course, to also provide ad hoc support based on country needs. In countries where there will be a CSP manager on site or hosted by the country, the, this person will work closely with the national authorities to help coordinate this effort. In other countries um, within the same hub, they can also get reports through the CSP manager or support can come through GTFCC partners, through deployments of technical support or even the CSP team in, um, in Geneva. You may have seen the milestones in previous presentations or, or on documents online, um, but I wanted to quickly take you through our um, milestones for the next three years, which are also very closely aligned with the outcomes one, two, and three. So the aim is really to expand the number of countries engaged in the development of NCPs, including the establishment of national cholera coordination platforms if these have not already been established. So this links to outcome one. Then the implementation of NCPs, um, um, that they include a resource mobilization and advocacy component. Um, and this would be measured by the number of countries who have developed costed NCPs and developed plans to advocate and fundraise against those plans. And the CSP will um, be available to pro provide support in that process. Um, then we will also measure our progress by ensuring that countries do receive technical support that they have requested be that through the CSP country program managers embedded in the country or through temporary or longer term um, uh, support by technical experts for specific projects or activities, such as OCV campaigns, um, wash, uh, wash activities or outbreak response. And this aligns with the um, outcome number three. Um, Finally, I would also like to link um, the, the indispensable contribution of partners and do donors towards making the CSP successful um, to these three outcomes as well. So all caller partners and donors can help the CSP in supporting national coordination through sharing information on activities, um, projects implemented in cholera affected countries, etc. Um, for resource mobilization and advocacy, uh, GTFCC members and donors may align as one behind the national cholera control plans to assist and support governments engage in cholera elimination in a structured and coordinated way. And then finally, um, for the technical assistance, we very much rely on GTFCC members um, and donors to support the CSP with their technical expertise, responding directly to country requests or indirectly through expert loans, um, such as skill-based sponsorship or secondment, or through the, GSP, uh, G through the GTFCC CSP expert pool. So to conclude, um, and now that the longer term team of the CSP is coming on board, uh, we will really work on, on our vision um, of the CSP um, that is in its name, the country support. And we are hoping to refine the processes and mechanisms together with countries, partners and donors to progressively operationalize the CSP. Um, it's not going to happen overnight, but we are really excited to, to progressively um, uh, really outline the process on how, to, how, how we can best support countries. Um, and it's deliberately a step-by-step -step process to learn from our experiences. And we're really looking forward to engage with you to work toward, together towards our common goal of ending cholera. 
Um, I will stop here um, and I just wanted to leave you with our a common email address for the country support platform and also would like to take the opportunity to thank the inception team um, at IFRC who has brought us to this stage now. Thank you very much um, for, for your time and for this opportunity. Over to you, Fru.